and welcome to the second session for today. This uh, session is on the go image editing with Photoshop Touch. This morning we had a session with um, that focused on um, montages in the classroom and what we can do with montages. You can find these links here and also um, just head back into the YouTube video and you'll see the links um, in that as well. You'll see the link underneath the YouTube video so you'll be able to get to that presentation deck and that uh, recording. But our presenter again this afternoon is Ross Wallace and Russ is the head of creative arts at Sidcott School in the UK. And uh, one of my favourite, um, I love how Ross works with photography all the time. So I really appreciate him sharing his expertise with us. You can find Ross on the Education Exchange and he has quite a few resources there to help you use photography in your classroom. Um, so you might like to jump on there and have a look at some stage as well. And um, so Ross, I think I'm going to hand over to you. Are you there? I'm here. Am I coming through yeah. okay? Can you hear and me? And I will absolutely perfectly. So I'm going to mute myself and hit Oh, I've just lost you, Pep. Um I'm not quite, sorry, I'm not quite seeing my slideshow properly. I can only see a bit of it. Does it look okay to you? Yes, it looks fine to us. If you click the arrows down, um, you should I be able to I see it it's screen. fine by me. All right, okay, I'm going to mute myself. See you later. Okay. That's better. Right, we're there. Um, well, Pip introduced me, so enough of that. And Mark already knows me and, and was in this morning's session as well. So I'm just going to repeat a couple of the slides I showed this morning uh, as an introduction. This is me and basically what I do, which is very simple cut and paste with Photoshop with my younger students. Um, I showed this slide as well. This was me playing a game of Photoshop ping pong with another AEL. Nicole Delezio, and um, this is another one of hers. So I'm going to start where I left off with this idea of Photoshop ping pong, which we've done a lot of in the past with other AELs and between schools. Um, these are a few slides here from uh, a game that I was playing with a tutor at one of the colleges in London, one of the art colleges. Um, if you look at the mouse down there, uh, here he comes in in, an, in another slide. The idea of Photoshop ping pong is you take an image, any image, um, and you send it to whoever you're playing with. They alter it and send it back. You add to it and send it back, and they alter it and add to it and send it back. And so the game goes backwards and forwards. And uh, with this particular game, we were playing for um, weeks and weeks and weeks, and it got quite complex, the imagery. Um, but it was all done on iPads. Um, using Photoshop Touch um, and the collage and the montage just built up and up. So there are, there are effects like the, the colors in here, which I'm going to show you, I'll demonstrate shortly using blending modes in Photoshop Touch um, and the way that the, the different effects that those give, which are brilliant. Um, but I also, I highly recommend finding someone to play Photoshop ping pong against because it gives a, a stimulation to to actually do some creating and do some exploring. Um, right, photography I'm going to talk a little bit about. Um, this image was done by one of my students, taken by one of my students. This was a self-portrait probably eight or ten years ago on a, a tiny little clamshell um, camera. And I stick it in here because, firstly, because it's the first time that I saw a student take a photograph and edit it on the phone. And eight, eight years ago, that was quite remarkable um, to me. And now it's, it's commonplace. Um, I think eight years ago, if I'd asked one of my uh, classes if they had cameras, I would only maybe have got a couple of hands up. But if I ask now, even my youngest students, almost all of them have cameras on their phones. 
So things have changed extraordinarily over the last decade. Um, I also put that slide in because it reminds me of a photograph by Margaret Cameron. Uh, and it, it strikes me that what we're doing at the moment with photography is sort of reassessing what it is in a very similar way to which the photographers a hundred odd years ago, um, hundred and well over a hundred years ago, um, were trying to discover what photography was in relation to um, art at the time, the, the art of painting mostly. And Margaret Cameron um, knew uh, Rossetti and there was that sort of link there with pre-Raphaelitism and she would also have known Beresford. The, these photographers, um, Stryken is another example, they are what are called the, the pictorialists and at the very beginning of photography they were making photographs look and feel a bit like paintings and I think what they were sort of doing was establishing a photographic um, language in relation to um, the, the art of the time and what they knew at the time and it wasn't really until Edward Weston came along um, and other photographers in the early 20th century and said this is what photography is um, that we began to get the idea of um, you know the shooting the, the, the viewfinder and shooting what you see and capturing the decisive moment the Cartier-Bresson um, and being realistic to life with the camera never lies all that sort of stuff before that, you could sort of do anything that you wanted with a camera, really. Um, and with digital photography and the way that we can manipulate images now with very, very powerful computers, I sort of think that we're reassessing what photography is and going back and looking through all the different processes. There are so many apps on smartphones now um, that replicate sort of 70s slide film or um, black and white or um, even light bleeds and things like that. We're in, in a sort of period of, ex, of exploring what photography is now in relation to smartphones and very powerful handheld computers. And it is quite incredible what you can do with a phone. This was a, a fairly mediocre photograph that I took of one of my students sitting outside the art room. And I added a bit of texture, a bit of uh, radial blur, um, a, a vignette and created a painting. It's sort of like I'm making a picture rather than taking it. The original picture as took was pretty boring, but the, the picture that I've made is, is sort of more of a, a painting, although it remains photographic. Um, at the other extreme, perhaps, is this very high key picture. Um, again, a bit of vignette, messing around a little bit with the colors. Um, it's, it reminds me a bit of that Tim Burton film, Scissor Hands, and the sort of the feel that he got in there, the, the heightened colours. Um, this is one of my GCSE students using an app on her smartphone to create an image with multiple layers and different colours. Um, and this is a, another student photograph using high dynamic range, HDR. Um, you can either get on iPhones now, you have an automatic HDR setting where the camera will take three photographs, one at very high, um, long, uh, high key, one low key and one in the middle um, and then mix them together so that you get a, a picture that has a very wide tonal range. But you can get um, filters in Photoshop Touch and other apps that will simulate HDR. Um, and then another thing that I'm going to demonstrate shortly is using blending modes in Photoshop Touch. That's an example. I think that's a photograph of a pond, the school pond, and then a photograph of a student jumping in the air and the two were put together to make that image using a blending mode. Here's another example of a blending mode and also a, a, a negative um, image. Um, this was another student of mine a few years ago, three years ago, I think. She took a lot of photographs of her own legs and then took the backgrounds out and put very bright colors in, playing around with the color, the saturation. Um, and from a long time ago, a project, a similar project that I did with my year sevens, where they went out and photographed 
all the school bags that they could find and then took the backgrounds out um, and put bright colors in instead. That's a fun group project to do. Um, or taking a photograph into Photoshop Touch and adding a, a filter like the Gaussian blur um, to, to create an effect, a sort of um, Gerhard Richter sort of effect, I would guess. This is one that my students latch on to very quickly and easily, which is to desaturate um, an image but leave just one bit with a with a certain amount of saturation which gives a, a spectacular effect particularly on lips though it works on cityscapes or anything else really where you desaturate but just leave leave one bit with color um, you can get some quite stunning results with that and then these are some selfies that I take I take a lot of selfies um, not because I'm vain I don't think um, but because I'm the, the nearest model that I have to hand, I'm regularly turning my camera on myself. Um, this was just an image that I took, which was partially inverted on some layers, and then some of it was left not inverted. Um, we do this quite a lot. I, I have an, a, a darkroom here, and we do a lot of traditional developing of photographs, because that's something that the students here haven't grown up with. It's new to them. And they love it but i find it really useful when we're we're creating negative images what we do is we we often we put um photographic paper into the back of old box brownie cameras and then expose them for about a minute and and then develop them and i take a quick snapshot of the result and use photoshop touch to to invert the image back to a um from the negative um this was a, a selfie that i took using a camera that has a, sh a long shutter um, speed on the iPhone. I think it's a, an app called Slow Cam. Um, and then I played around with that in Photoshop Touch with the transparencies and different layers to get that sort of rather dreamy effect. Um, here's another felt selfie. <laughs> I've chosen these on purpose just to amuse myself, I think. Um, I've just knocked the background back on that one by selecting, using the quick select tool to select the face and the shoulders and then knock the rest of it back. Um, and again, uh, a selfie. And I've put in quite a lot of texture um, and just texture into the background. Um, this is a, a photograph, a straight photograph that I took. I duplicated the photograph two or three times. On one layer, I put quite a strong Gaussian blur. On another layer, I've really upped the saturation and then I've used the transparencies and used a, an eraser to control which areas of the image I want to saturate, which areas I want to blur, and which areas I want to leave as the original sharp image. It's it's very easy stuff to do, but you can you can get a lot of control over how you deal with different areas of a photograph. Um, again, using layers, this was a photograph of a of a plastic bag, a bin bin liner. And I've put the photograph of the student in front of it and then used transparency to let some of the background image come through. And I think I've probably also used a bit of HDR filter on that as well. Um, this is a, an obvious one where I've selected and blurred the background, not particularly successfully because it's quite difficult on the phone to, to get it, it, as detailed as you can on a laptop or a desktop machine. But you know, given that it was done on the phone, it's not bad at all, I would say. Um, and a very simple photo shoot in the art room where we've used Photoshop Touch just to knock the white back to white because the, the, the background had got rather grubby in my art room. Um, and I'm just going to finish with a couple of slides here. Um, I love doing these random collages. These are just photographs of the bins in the art department and the collages that build up. But this one got a bit scrumpled. And it reminds me um, of uh, a technique that's called frossage, um, a, a term coined by a Czech artist called Jiri Kola, who actually took images and then screwed them up and then collaged with them. This was one of my year uh, seven groups where they were taking selfies and then screwing them up and then re-photographing them. Um, but I, I like the fact that it, because it's a photograph, a straight photograph, which is sort of like a window onto the world, um, the fact that it's then screwed up gives it the image itself a certain three-dimensionality 
So there's an ambiguity there as to whether it's an object or whether it's a window. Um, I'm going to move on now and actually try and do some live demonstrating. It did work when we did this earlier, but whether I can get it to work now, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so I'm going to go share my screen. And then see if I can get my phone to connect. Yep, we're there. Brilliant. I'm trusting that you're seeing my phone there. Um, I'm going to start with a camera, and I've got dozens of them. It's just, I mean, it just amazes me. In the old days, you would have a camera, but these days I've got all sorts of cameras to do all sorts of different things. But I'm going to choose just the straight camera. Oh, look at that, wonderful. Um, I'm going to use the front one. I'm going to take a quick photograph of myself here. Uh, doing a Maori hacker. I told you I was brought up in New Zealand. So, Three, two, one. Ah, that's all. I would. Um, I'm then going to open up Photoshop Touch, and I'm going to import that image um, from my photo library. I'm assuming this on on smartphones with the iPhone. Um, a lot of photos straight um, that the photo, and then you can pick it up into Photoshop Touch from there. Right, I'm just going to quickly crop the image a bit, reduce it down. And I'm going to take a selection tool. There are lots of selection tools from the quick selection tool, the brush selection tool, magic wand, but I'm just going to choose the, the lasso. Let's pinch it in and I'm going to take a quick rough lasso here of the mouth and then up to here to go, uh, oop, I didn't mean to do that, back we go. I want to go copy and I want to go paste. And obviously as in uh, the desktop versions of Photoshop, when you do a paste, um, it paste into a new layer, on touch, it also comes up straight away with the transform tool. So I'm going to make that a little bigger and slightly rotate it. And then take the eraser and I'm going to change the eraser. I'm going to make it as big as I and as soft as I possibly can. Leave the flow right up bring the opacity down quite a lot and then just use the eraser to blend this in like this. I'm doing this very quickly so it's not going to be neat. It will give you an idea of just how quick and easy it is. I'm going to now go in and make my brush a bit smaller, but bring the opacity up so I can get a little bit more control around here. There we go. That'll do. Yeah. Um, Quick, instant, and dirty, but really good fun. I, and I mean, you can imagine the hilarity of, of doing that with a group of year sevens, of 10 year olds, 11 year olds. Right, I'm going to go uh, just into done, save. That saves it back into my library, and then I can export it from there, save to camera roll as a JPEG, take it back into camera roll. And if I go back into my camera roll, 
Where are we? You'll see it comes up sideways. I don't know why Photoshop does this, but I'm just going to go into Edit and turn it the right way around. Maybe some setting that I've done somewhere. It's made it do that. Oh, it's my daughter. Thank you, my daughter. Send me a photograph from the House of Commons. Right, back into photos. I'm going to go back here. So one that I did earlier, just when I was playing around to make sure that this is going to work. And I've used an app called Tangled Effects to sort of make it painterly. It's extraordinary what you can do on an iPhone. Um, there's an app in here that I use lots called Snapseed. It's a Google, it's now owned by Google. Snapseed R is another one that I really like. Many of them, photo editing, laminar is another really good one. If you go onto the website, I put a whole section of my apps up there. Into Photoshop Touch, I'm going to show you a question. Um, go back into my photos. Uh, go back to the seven class I had somewhere back here. That was one of my students taking Photographs of him, sort of um, acetate, the sort of acetate that you put through a photocopy machine. And I'm going to go into the layers and uh, attach photo library uh, back to the same about three weeks um, and take the bottle here. First, I'm going to duplicate the bottle layer. Um, and then drag it down to the bottom, tell you why shortly. I'm then going to take this layer and bring transparency down so that I can see. And with the layer below, I'm now going to go into the transform so that I can scale it to back in the bottle. Like that. And then you jumping around. If I go into the extras map, then it will be more controllable as to where it will go. I think snap might well be the default. Right, I'm going to turn it right up big, turn the transparency down a bit again. Rub out. Let's grab a bit more. Rub that around into that will do. Back into there and turn the capacity right up a bit. And with, when I'm in the top layer, I'm now going to go into the effects and HDR. You just turn the HDR up a bit. I'm also going to go into um, um, the levels and bring the contrast up a bit. That gives a sort of unreal effect. Back into my eraser. Let's make it less opaque and rub the image through. I've got about five more minutes. I'll just show you one more thing. Well, it's just a simple. Um, the room behind here, I'm not going to use it. But, um, if I was doing this on a desktop, I would be using um, a layer mask and it was destructive. Um, we don't have layer masks on the on Photoshop Touch. Um, so if I always keep the original photograph here, back to it, if I make a mistake with my rubbing out, out um, I can just um, go anytime I want. Sorry about all the from my daughter. Uh, she was at a protest today in the Houses of Parliament and she took a lot of photos she wants to put up on her blog, but she's asking me to to do a bit of Photoshop work on them. 
Um, right. So I'm going to go back there. I'm going to show you some, um, of using blending layer. Blending modes. I show you that was um, again you plastic from the overhead projector. The student held that face to take off, and the bottom is a photograph of the plastic photographed. And then if the two on, and we use a different split on the on the top layer, um, that it it works. With the layer below. Um, I use that a lot. Let's have a look at another one. This is a self portrait that I did. It's there. It's quite a complex image building up using those legs again scraps that I've been trying to find um, and then using that photograph with another photograph compressed one I, I compressed one image and then added to some uh, scrambled eggs in there I think from breakfast um, and they all sort of go to the original photograph and again, if we look in here, you'll see that I'm using a demo to, to give it that sort of a, um, I'm just about to, I will show you one more. Um, that's another, this is another one of, um, where I've taken image. Oops, let's just go back there. Um, that graphed into actually into the mirror of an overhead project and, and I took that image it with a transform Okay, that's awesome, Ross. That's just wonderful. Thank you. Yep, I'm still here. I'm still hearing you. If anybody has any questions for Ross, please pop them into the questions area. But um, I, that was just amazing. You've inspired me to have a bit, try and have a little bit of a play every weekend and do some sort of a montage from around my world. So thank you very much. And I'm going to be visiting your site because I know I don't know what I don't know. So being able to see what you do gives me inspiration and ideas to try. So thank you. So some samples of the student work, I believe, um, would that be your website? How can we get some samples? This morning's presentation as well.
Exactly. I think that's exactly right, Russ. Well, I will make sure, yes, Kelly, I can pop the links from the session once we've um, once I've uploaded the video to YouTube, which will be a couple of days. I'll um, put that link on there to both of those. So just keep an eye on the Facebook area. Russ, thank you so much for your time. I know it's late for you in the UK, so I really appreciate the time you've given. We do have a question for students just getting started. What apps and cameras would you recommend for the iPhone? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ross. Um, and someone said iPhone or iPad, which is your preference? Debbie asked that. Fantastic. Okay, then let's wrap this session up. Everyone, thank you so much for attending and you will get, um, I'll put the links either through and around the place. So if you registered, you'll get an email or duck onto both those edX activities. So thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you so much, Ross, for all you did to prepare for this. And we'll see you in two weeks' time. We are doing After Effects in 3D introductions with After Effects and virtual 3D backgrounds with After Effects with um, uh, Jason Cartier. So we will see you all then. Thank you, Ross. All righty, everyone. See you later. Thank you. I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to do that.